Welcome to another work example with Dr. Schleit. In this physics question, we're considering a spherical mass that's been suspended in an electric field connected to a system of pulleys and a two gram mass over here. We know that this system is in equilibrium, which means that there is no net force and no net torque acting on this. Since it's not sort of a pivot type question, we really only have to consider the first condition of equilibrium, no net force. Um, so this thing has mass, so it has weight acting down, but this thing has more mass and therefore more weight acting down. So without the electric field, you would expect this system to accelerate sort of this way. But because we know it's in equilibrium and the question tells us that it is, there must be an electric force, um, let's see, pushing down on this because the, the pulley would sort of otherwise pull it up. Um, since we know the direction of the field is pointed downwards, the positive plate is you know, sort of above it. The direction that a positive charge would move is in the direction of the field. And so we know that this sphere has to be positively charged, right? Because the electric force is sort of pushing it down this way. Um, and the pulley is in equilibrium with it. And so the first thing that I'm going to calculate is the weight of these objects. And so the weight of something is its mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Something that is two grams is 0 0.002 kilograms. Multiply that by 9.81 newtons per kilogram. You get sort of converting the mass into weight. I'm going to do the same thing here. Convert this into kilograms, and so 0.8 would be, you know, move the dust point over three places or divide by a thousand, so 0 0.0008. Zero, 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 kilograms times 9.81 newtons per kilogram. All right, now I give me newtons of weight force for each of those. I like to do my mental math over here on this side of the lab. So yeah, what is uh, 0.002 times 9.81? Well, 9.81 is about 10, so it's going to be about 10 times that. So this number is going to be what? 0 0.01962 newtons. And if I do some mental math with the uh, other mass there, 0 0.8 grams convert to kilograms, multiply it by 9.81, that's going to be Zero zero seven eight four eight newtons. All right. So there is a net force there, you know, acting in this direction, and we can sort of take the difference between those two to see what the net force is. So again, that's just the the sort of the difference in the weights here. You know, if you have sort of two masses suspended for pulleys, it's like who's going to win that tug of war? Well, the one that has more weight, obviously. All right. So point zero one. 962 minus 0 0.007848. So the change in sort of the difference in force is going to be 0 0.011772 newtons. And so that must be the force that the electric field is providing. Right, it has to sort of be the difference in force. Otherwise, there would be an acceleration in that direction, as per the very famous Newton's second law, F equals ma. Right, so where there is a resultant force, there is acceleration. Now, if we're in equilibrium, we could be moving sort of constant velocity, um, but in any case, the forces are balanced there. In other words, the acceleration is zero, so the forces have to be balanced. Because we can see that the forces are not balanced. Uh, in terms of just the weight forces, there must be that electric force equal to that. So we know the electric field strength here is 2,000 volts per meter. That is to say, the electric field strength is 2,000 newtons per coulomb. So a newton per coulomb is the same thing as a volt per meter. And if we need this amount of force, we're trying to solve for the charge on this thing. And we know that this is equal to force per charge. So we'll substitute this value in for the force. In other words, the missing sort of weight force has to be provided by the electric field. And so that is the electric force that this field is providing to this mass to keep it in equilibrium, sort of this right here. So we're gonna have, um, I'm gonna switch Q and E, right? So E equals F over Q. So I'm gonna say, well, that Q then would be equal to F over E, the force 0 0.011772 
newtons divided by the electric field 2000. Newtons per coulomb, so newtons will cancel, will be in coulombs, but the answer choices are all in micro coulombs, so one additional calculation necessary there. All right. So this leads to a charge of 5.886 by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. We just mentioned in the previous video that it's good to know your metric prefixes, both to go from orders of 10 to the metric prefix and sort of vice versa. So millionth, 10 to the negative 6, that's micro. We use the Greek letter mu for that. So this is the same thing as this. 10 to the negative 6 is micro. So it's 5.9 micro coulombs, and that's going to be positive. So indeed, we mentioned, uh, as we were considering this paper one question, let me cue it up for you. Everybody following along at home here. We considered that a, a brave student may consider the answer choices negative 5.9 and positive 5.9 and say, well, that answer shows up twice. And so it might be the correct answer if we could just deduce sort of the magnitude of the charge, is it positive or negative? And since we already know it's positive, you know, very brave students would just say, well, let's just pick the, the positive sort of number that uh, is repeated. And in this case, that would serve you well because it actually is the correct answer as we just showed on the chalkboard a moment ago. So the correct answer here is C is positive 5.9 microcoulombs, but to remove any doubt, we're gonna queue up the mark scheme for this paper. So I encourage you as you study for these ACE physics papers to look at past papers and to give yourself immediate feedback so that once you try a question out like this, you know, go into the mark scheme, question 31, and indeed the correct answer is C. And so you did something good. If you get the correct answer, if you did something wrong, try to go back and find your mistake. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments or bring them to class if you're lucky enough. All right, this has been another worked example with Dr. Schleich, and we'll see you next time.